What up, what up? I'm your host, Following Christ, and this is your weekly wake up call. Don't forget that you can follow me on YouTube at the name Z O E F R E A K, the number 95. Don't forget that you can subscribe to this channel to constantly get these videos as they are uploaded. Don't forget that you can also favorite any of these videos that you like, as well as share them with your family, friends, and co workers, even somebody that considers you an enemy. Don't forget that you can like us on Facebook at the name The Watchman for Christ. That's the page that myself and The Watchman 118 share on Facebook. We post links to our videos on YouTube, as well as scripture and different topics that are related to um, things that are happening currently in the world that relate to biblical prophecy as the world comes to the close of its history. And today I want to share something with you or talk to you about something that is vitally important probably the most important video that I will ever make. Um, that topic is on what is repentance or repenting and why should we repent? Well, we must get a better understanding so that we can be on the same page of what the word repent even means. The dictionary defines repent as to feel or show that you are sorry for something bad or wrong that you did and that you want to do what is right. So there's a difference between just simply saying you're sorry or asking for forgiveness because a lot of times when people do that, they just go right back and do the same thing over. They may be sorry that they hurt you or that they did something wrong or we may be sorry that we hurt someone or did something wrong. But we may not truthfully understand what we did, why it was wrong, and why it hurt a person, and why we shouldn't do it anymore. See, when you repent, you're saying that, hey, I know this is wrong. I see what it does, and I don't want to do that anymore. I want to substitute it for something that's right. I want to put something right in its place. So this brings us to the question of, why should we repent? Why does the Bible talk about repentance? Well, if we read in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, the Bible says that the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God wants us to repent. That's the number one reason why we should. God desires for us to repent of our sins and wrongdoings. He is the one, the main one, that desires for man to stop doing the wrong that they do and substitute it with good. Another reason that we should repent is in Isaiah chapter 59 verse 2. It says, but your iniquities have separated between you and your God and your sins have hid his face from you is hit, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. Our sins and the wrong that we do ultimately cut us off and drive a wedge between us and God. It actually changes our perception of how we see God. The more we sin, the less likely we are to seek God and want God into our lives. See, the more wrong we do, the less right we care about. Um, so when we think about that, of why we should repent, we have to think about what happens when we don't. Who does our sin really go against or who does it really affect? The Bible says in Psalms chapter 51 verse 4, it says, Against thee and thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. The Bible says that it is against God who we sin against. Ultimately, all of our sins are against God. Even if we hurt our brother, sister, wives, girlfriends, boyfriends, husbands, classmates, teachers, we're ultimately hurting God. And the Bible is clear on this in Matthew chapter 25, verse 40. It says, And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. When we wrong another person, when we steal, when we lie, when, when we say hurtful things against people, when we do hurtful things to people, we're ultimately hurting God. We're not just hurting that person. We're hurting God. So if we don't repent, we're hurting God. But what else does sin do? What does sinning ultimately do to us? Well, the Bible says that in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, for the wages of sin is death. Ultimately, if we continue to sin and we do not repent, we will die. Sin 
goes against every fiber of who God is and what he ultimately really created us for. Sin is actually foreign to our nature, but we have adopted it. It has been incorporated into mankind since the fall in the garden. And the more we sin, the less we seek God, the less we want him in our lives. God, If God is life and sin drives a wedge between us and life, the only thing that's left is for us to die. Sin separates us from God. It changes man's outlook on the God who not only created us, but sent his only son to die in our place to save us. The Bible says in John chapter 3 verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Even though the world teaches us that God will simply destroy us for not doing what he asks, or that he is just some kind of tyrant, but the Bible paints a totally different picture of God and what God actually is trying to do. If you read John chapter 3, verse 17, it says, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn us, but that the world through him might be saved. So if we look at the, the undaunting, undaunting parallels between John 3, 16 and 3, 17, John 3, 16 says that God loved the world. God loved the world so much he sent his son into the world so that if we believed in his son, we wouldn't die. And then in John 3, 17, it says that God sent his son into the world not to condemn us, but that the world would be saved through him. Well, even though the world teaches us that God is a tyrant and he's condemning us, if we don't do what he says, he's going to do this, that, or the other to us. The Bible says something totally different. So if God doesn't condemn us, what or who does? The Bible says in John chapter 3, verse 18 through 19, He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. So, what the, con what the condemnation actually is, is when we don't believe that God sent Christ to die and save us on our behalf. We condemn ourselves by not choosing to follow God and accept his son's sacrifice ultimately denying him. The condemnation is that light. That light is God's word. It's his son. The book of John chapter 1 says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was with God in the beginning. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made. This is the condemnation. Light has come into the world, brothers and sisters. But men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 9 that the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? We don't even know our own hearts. But you always hear people say, I got to do it my way. It's all about me. This is my life. You don't tell me what to do. I make these choices. I, 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 I. I'm going to do what I want. I know what's best for me. If our hearts are deceitful and desperately wicked and no one can know them, how do we really know what's best for us? The Bible says that we disregard light because our, our deeds are evil. We like darkness rather than light. Why not choose the light instead of walking around being lost in darkness? If light helps us see, why wouldn't we want it? Our, our deeds are evil. And the Bible explains why. Because our hearts are deceitful. We can't trust ourselves. The only one we can trust is God. The Bible is explicit in its detail. In gaining salvation. It sounds too good to be true. That all one has to do is simply believe and allow God to lead their lives. It seems too easy. 
But the thing about it is, it is just that easy. Don't be deceived. We cannot continue to live as we please and just simply think that everything will be okay. The reason that people believe that everything will be okay is because in Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 11 it says, Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. When people aren't punished right away for the wrong that they do, it actually amplifies and turns up the evil that they will want to do later on. People fail to realize that just because you aren't punished in the way that you think you should be, or you aren't punished at that particular moment, that you will not be punished. A lot of the diseases and illnesses, imprisonments, the assaults, the deaths, are results of the things that people have done in their past that they never repented from or asked forgiveness for. Those, those things do come back. Ultimately, if you do not repent and ask forgiveness for your sins, the wages of sin is death, is an eternal one, one that will separate you from the only God that loves you. The wages of sin is death, and just because something doesn't happen to you right away, does not mean that it won't. When we allow our anger and emotions to control us, we ultimately hold grudges and hold on to things that we cannot change. These things bring us nothing but stress-related diseases, heartache, shattered homes, and relationships. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26 through 27, that we ought to be ye angry, but sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. It's not a sin to be angry, but it's a sin to allow your anger to cause you to do something that you normally wouldn't. We shouldn't even let the sun set upon us being angry at a person. Because a day, we can't tell what a day will bring. We can't tell that if the sun sets, that may be the last breath that we take, or the last breath that they take. Don't give place to the devil. Don't let the devil have a foothold in your life by allowing anger to rule over you, bitterness and contentment. It's not a good way to live. If we don't repent and, and forsake our sins, they will ultimately keep us from being with God and living eternally with Him. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 starting at verse 9 1 Corinthians chapter 6 starting at verse 9 This is a very powerful verse one that is obviously looked over by many Christians or proclaimed Christians. It says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, those men who like to act like women, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, those who lay with those of the same sex that they are. Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. I don't care what the news media tells you, what the world tells you, what your friends say, what the government tries to force on you. We need to stop allowing social media to rule and govern our lives and our minds. A very rampant subject is sweeping the nation and the world. That of the homosexual agenda. Brothers and sisters, the proof is in the pudding. If it was meant for a man to be with another man, or a woman to be with another woman, we would have been created that way. We will be able to procreate with one another. The only way that man can propagate life 
as if he was with a woman. The Bible says, did he not make them from the beginning, male and female? He didn't make men and men, women and women. He made Adam for Eve and Eve for Adam. So shall a man leave his mother and father and cleave unto his wife, and they shall no longer be twain, but one flesh. Don't buy into the hype. The devil is pushing hard to distort everything that is of God. The Lord says that that's an, the act of homosexuality is an abomination to his eyesight. That word means disgusting. That doesn't mean that God doesn't still love you. If you are practicing that type of that type of lifestyle, God loves you, but he wants you to repent from it. He wants you to stop it. That was never his intent for you, for anyone. The Bible tells us in Jude, verse 7, what happened in Sodom and Gomorrah. It says, even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner are giving themselves over to fornication, sleeping with others who were not their legally married spouse, or sleeping around before they were married, and going after strange flesh. That's men laying with other men and women laying with other women because that is strange to our original nature are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Don't allow the media and the world to confuse you. God's word is plain. Don't do it. Don't allow them to distort the view of the Lord. Don't allow them to do this anymore to any of you. God loves you more than any mother or any earthly father will ever love their children. We need to seek God while there is still time. That time is right now. Seek his everlasting mercy and seek his forgiveness. If we actually go to God, the Bible says in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. There is nothing that you have done or that you can do other than blaspheme the Holy Spirit that God will not forgive you for. Repent of it and let it go. Trade it for something good, for something right, something that God desires. Whatever is pure and holy, think on those things. Whatever is good, of good report, if there be any praise in that, think on it. This world is ending. The devil is fighting hand over fist to take as many people out as he possibly can and keep them from not going home with God. The devil has casted his vote against you, but God has casted his vote for you, and you ultimately have the tie-breaking vote. Which side are you going to choose? This is your host, Following Christ. And whether you accept this message or not, you must always remember the truth will always stay true. It's time to wake up.